So community services are the work you all do, not to a specific client, but to the communities you serve. Um, prevention, outreach, education, things to the people in the community. So to get there, I'm gonna click the services heading and then select community and institutional services. I can search for existing records by using these date ranges again. I don't see any records now, so let's go back in time. I'll change this to 2022 and see if, okay. So I can see records going back a little earlier. To enter a new community service, I'm gonna click this add button. I'm going to select the community service that was provided, the date that service was provided, number of presentations and contacts. Again, you may group these if you find that more helpful. I'm gonna use one for this example. If you do group, you just wanna make sure you enter the cumulative information. So let's say I did two presentations in a day. I'm going to change my tune here and do a grouped community service. So I did two presentations to a high school, one group in the morning, another group in the afternoon. So I'm going to say that was two presentations. <clears throat> Each presentation was 90 minutes, the morning session and the afternoon session. So I'm going to enter the cumulative number of hours, which would be three. Let's say there were 100 high school students in each of my presentation sessions, 100 plus another 100. So the cumulative number is 200. The agency that I provided this service to, hopefully I can find a high school in here. Oh, here we go, Alexandria High School. Now location, this is a text field. You can type in anything here. Again, consistency is key. Most users that I am aware of use either the city or the town or the zip code, particularly if they're in Chicago, because the zip code just gets a little more detail as, as to what part of the community you provided the service in. Um, again, I would suggest you pick a way to use this field and stay consistent with it. If you use zip code, let's keep it all zip code. If you use town, I would keep it that way. Or you might have a policy where you enter zip code for just the city of Chicago, simply because it's such a large area. And outside of Chicago, you use the name of the town. That's okay too, as long as all your staff are consistent with following that practice. and then the state and the county. And the comments section is another string field. Most that I see enter the title of the presentation, keeping it simple. And then finally, the staff information, you wanna enter the name of the staff who provided the presentation, Conduct hours would be, again, active time conducting that presentation. If it was three hours, maybe I'll say Luke did the morning session for 1.5 hours. We'll give him some preparation and travel hours. And then staff number two did an afternoon session. So we'll give her 1.5 hours. Now, if Luke and Irene were both actively providing the presentation and they were playing off each other during both presentations the whole time, if you can give them both three conduct hours. If there was clearly a divide in who was the presenter during that work, you would want to split their time. But oftentimes presentations are done where the, the, the presenters are actively playing off each other during the entire presentation. And if that's the case, they should both get all those conduct hours. So I'm gonna save my record and 
I can click this link to go back to the main community service page. If I need to edit anything, I click this edit button. I can edit whatever I need to edit. Or I can delete the record entirely from here, which this is from 9123 healthcare training. It's going to warn me if I delete the record. I'm going to say yes. <clears throat> and I can see that I think it was in December of 23 and a medical healthcare advocacy. And I can see that it's gone. So it did, in fact, delete.